Hey everyone, I'm here with one of my favorite people, Pastor Bill Johnson. Pastor Bill, thank you so much for joining me for this broadcast. You're welcome. That's a great privilege always. Well, we're putting together these videos for 2024, not to predict, not to prognosticate, but <laughs> listen, Destiny Image was established 40 years ago, actually, this year to publish yeah. the prophets. I love the prophets, um, but I also love revival. So that's why we're doing uh, what we're doing this broadcast because I I just sense Pastor Bill. I want I just wanted to have a conversation about this. Um, God is moving now; He's moving presently. But I sense we are so close to perhaps things that we have never even seen. I know people are talking about the darkness and the deep darkness, is, and that's there Isaiah sixty. But also, there's there's great glory and. Uh, I'm going to say this. One of my favorite audios, I still have it from you. I, I think, I don't know what it was, maybe a Friday night, and it was just called Rain. Um, and the Holy Spirit, yeah, you probably remember that one. The Holy Spirit fell powerfully in your sanctuary there. But the, that, that scripture has become one that drives me. Zechariah 10, yeah. verse 1, ask for rain in the time of rain. So what, when you hear that verse, what, what does that mean to you? To me, it means there's always more. So he says, "Ask for rain, basically while it's raining." So it's uh, it's it's positioning yourself for the more that God desires. It's all His plan. It's all His dream, and uh, our prayer life is just uh, is just feeding off of His dream, His desire for us. And uh, so it's just praying for rain while it's raining. I, I love that because. What I'm seeing right now, and uh, and I, I know you are as well, because I follow where you go, uh, places like in Missouri, where I, I know with that wonderful church out there with the Lindells, you have seen outstanding miracles. Um, what what are you seeing God doing right now? Just even uh, just a handful of examples. Well, there's uh, there's incredible miracles, and. And uh, of course, uh, a lot of them happen when pe when you know people lay hands on them and pray. But there's also this increase of just sovereign miracles during the preaching of the word, or during worship, or maybe maybe during a specific healing time. But nobody prayed for them in particular. And uh, <clears throat> so there's an increase with that. There's an increase of the Lord calling us to Himself to of real purity. And uh, there's a lot of that stuff going on. And I think I think it's connected. I think it's connected. I think the Lord just shaking us up and bringing purity and and all of that to us. I think is a huge part of uh, part of what He's doing. You know, He's positioning us for the harvest. He's positioning for us to display an authentic gospel with purity and power. And uh, so, I, I think all of that, all all of the above, is going on. Yeah. Well, it's just even breaking down Zechariah ten verse one asks for rain in the time of rain. Um, you know, it's interesting. I remember hearing you say something like, you know, basically encouraging people not to pray token prayers. If if it doesn't move me, it won't move him. And because I'm thinking right now, why? what is the importance of asking? Because it talks about in a time of rain and we're seeing that. We're, we're seeing revival rain. We're seeing the rain of outpouring happening right now. Yeah. But why the need? Why the need or provocation to keep asking? What, what why is Why is that important? You know, it, it's the heart of God. Hmm. And anytime we learn to pay attention to the heart of God, our hearts get changed. We get impacted by his heart. And uh, praying what he has a, a desire for, really, you know, it's the whole thing of seek first the kingdom of God, all these other things will be added to you. When we make the other stuff our priority, we miss both. But when we make his heart the priority, we get both. And mm. uh, and that's really the Christian life is that uh, is that it's a it's protocol it's priorities is what does God value what is He thinking what is He dreaming for and learning to pay attention to that and then giving ourselves in authentic prayer and um, intercession for those things to happen is it just changes us mm. it really it really helps us to become um, suited if you will to receive the answer. Well, you know, and I'm thinking it says ask for rain in the time of rain. We're talking about the asking in the time of rain um, right now. I mean, left and right, I'm hearing and I'm seeing reports of God 
moving in powerful ways with amazing miracles, even entire communities experiencing touches of the Holy Spirit. I'm thinking even Jensen Franklin and Free Chapel had a real uh, unusual visitation of the Holy Spirit recently. Wow. What, let me ask you this question because I, I so honor and trust you. When, when people hear about God moving in a unique place, um, why is it important? I, I know, for those of you who are watching, we're, we're just going to burst a box right now because some people are like, well, if God's moving, he can just touch. He knows my address. Why do you think, Pastor Bill, it, it is vital for us to actually get out of our comfort zone, go to places God is moving at? Well, it's it's huge. Is we don't we don't require him to do it our way and mm -hmm. to put us first. Mm -hmm. We pay attention to what he's doing, and then we go there to honor what he's doing. Yeah. And it's just you know the statement that I heard probably thirty years ago is wise men still travel. And that's the whole point is you find out what God is doing, where he's doing it, and honor it. Honor the place, honor the people, and especially honor the move of God. If you don't do that, you can just arrogantly sit back and expect God to come to you. And it's just not, it's not intelligent. It's not, it's not what hunger looks like. Hunger, hunger means I'm going to humble myself. And I may go across town to another church that is experiencing something. And I may not agree with them and this and that part of their theology. But if God has chosen to show up there, I better honor them. And, uh, and it really is a part of the humbling uh, process for all of us is to is to value what he values, honor those he honors, and celebrate. Mm. It, it makes me think of John Arnott talking about in the days of the Toronto Renewal Revival that he said half the blessing came to people because they were willing to travel. Yep. Just in inconvenience themselves. I mean, really, I I've been to Reading a few times. You have to be intentional to get to Reading, too. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, that's important. But I, but I love what you shared is in that I, I think sometimes that posture of saying, well, you know, God knows where I am. He can find me. That That's more than just saying that. It's saying uh, my, pre you know, I want God to move according to my preference. And. Right. We, you know, we don't get to give God terms to work with. Um, yeah. So what what do you, what, I, I love it. It goes on in Zechariah 10, where it talks about, and there will be showers of rain. And I think we're seeing that right now, showers of rain left and right. Um, yeah. for, for those who are, who are watching and just praying into the days ahead, uh, what, what do you just sense in your heart? What do you sense God saying, doing? I just want to turn it over to you just to share a word of encouragement about the days ahead. Well, for me, it's been all the last few years has been about simplifying, mm. uh, simplifying, uh, you know, making sure that I return to the simple gospel. Uh, Paul's statement in Corinthians, the simplicity of devotion to Christ. Um, it's very easy to add on to what God is doing. And right now we need to make sure that uh, that we are building on a solid, solid foundation of the simple uh pure and powerful gospel. Um, so that's uh, that's a huge part of, of my life, life these last several years is returning to the simplicity. Simplicity of devotion to him, simplicity of love and care for people. Um, it's, it's, it's not about getting complicated yeah. and figuring out all the world's problems. It's right now, it's just the gospel is the answer. Mm. And, uh, and living it simply and being able to demonstrate it. It's not a philosophy that we uh, uh, just get into deep dialogue about. It's a relationship with the Almighty God. It's the display of His power for the transformation of lives, including healing. It starts with salvation and transformation of a life. Uh, it's the simple gospel. And uh, anytime we start adding to that, we start wandering in our heart as, as far as uh, valuing things that aren't quite as important. Uh, mm. It's a simple gospel. So I, that's what I think is happening. It's, I think at least at least I can speak for me in, in my world. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of uh, returning to the simple gospel. For us, it meant, uh, you know, in the Rocky movies, there was uh, there was in, uh, I think, the third movie where they they wanted to get back to uh, uh, to the old gym. Mm. And, and they had become too sophisticated. And and for us, that really happened. Uh, you know, when we, we weren't able to meet uh, like we would normally meet during the pandemic. So we 
pitched a tent outside in, in horrible weather. We were out there praying and crying out to God, and it was returning to the old gym. It's what got us here, mm. that, that kind of a hunger and passion for God. And and I, I still feel the Lord on that on that process. It's easy to get so sophisticated in what we do that we forget the price uh, that was paid to get us here. Mm. No, I, I love that. I think that's because sometimes when we're looking for prophetic words for the year, we're sometimes looking for predict, predictive things and prognostications. And, God, you know, God has the right to release things like that. But I, I do think sometimes it is these instructive words. It's what you're sharing out of your own wealth. It's, it's, it's simplifying. It's getting back to the basics. It's getting back to the most important cornerstones, I believe, of our walk with the Lord. And, uh, no, I'm 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 grateful. I'm grateful for what the Holy Spirit's been doing at Bethel. It's funny. I, I think of those days where you guys pitched the tent. And I remember hearing the testimonies that were coming out of that. I was so tempted to come just because. But, you know, let me say this is I do believe we need to go places where God is moving. But it is interesting where God sometimes will do just something so special and so sacred. And it's not necessarily for those outside. It sounded like he was doing something very beautiful in your yeah. community during that yeah. time. No, no, that's true. That's true. It, it really stirred up, you know, the church family to to hunger after the Lord. We were hungry before, but it, something happened during that time that was very special, a very special grace from God. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Well, as we're honestly finishing up, the, the one thing that we've also done is we have relaunched, given a fresh edition of The Real Faith by Charles Price. I had never heard of the book. That's terrible. I, I'm a book publisher. I had never heard of it until I heard you reference it. And I just very briefly, how how has this book been an influencing factor in your life and ministry? Well, it's 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 a sobering book for me. It's not sobering in the sense of uh, harsh, but I read through it and I realize how little what I thought faith was in my life. <laughs> how little bit, a little bit was actually faith, you know. Um and it's a clarifying book. It's an inspiring book. It's an inviting book. Uh, but it, it it helps us to really hunger for and to pursue after the Lord and demonstrate authentic faith. And uh, it's a great title for a book. I'm so glad you guys did that. You did such an amazing job with it, too. I love I love how you uh, reproduced this book because it is an all-time classic. I've talked with I have a very well-known uh, evangelist friend of mine that ministers around the country, and he uh, he, he he agrees with me that it's the number one book on faith. Oh yeah, so I love it. I it is. Well, the funny thing is, it's given me a little bit of a window into how some of you navigate an atmosphere because I love Char Charles Price was constantly looking for the impartation of faith. He was looking for the people who basically had the Lord had downloaded supernatural faith. And in his meetings, he would be partnering with what the Holy Spirit was doing in those people. So it is powerful to read that because it really gives you a solid biblical approach to you know, healing. It, why, why, you know, why did this particular person get a healing in this meeting? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't answer all the questions, but it, it gives great clarity, I think. Sure. So, yeah, it does. You're right. You're and, right. It does. Yeah. When it's we're, inspiring we're, for me. It, it just makes me hunger for more. Yep. Well, and then some of his testimonies talk about things. That, I mean, they totally provoke and uh, whet the appetite for the more. So that's really yeah. kind of finishing up where we started. It's like God is moving. Yeah. It is raining. And uh, we, we asked for more. And yeah. I'm grateful for you, Pastor Bill. You have provoked me and I know so many other people to lean into that for years. Yes. And... Uh, you know, you've taught us we celebrate what he is doing, but we equally cry out for more. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. So, Good job. Well, well, well yeah. Thank, thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate your perspective. And again, for those of you who are watching, really believe that's a foundational maturing word for us is we need to get things simplified. We need to get back to the basics. And I do believe we need to watch for the Holy Spirit's doing and continue to ask him for the fullness. We celebrate what he's doing, but we do ask for more in yeah. Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Bill. Oh, you bet. So good to see you.
You too. Talk yeah. to you soon. Thanks. All right. Look forward to it. Bless you. Bye-bye.